Good morning, everyone. My name is Joshua, and I'm excited to talk about Transformers.js, a library we're developing at Hugging Face uh, that brings state-of-the-art machine learning to the web. First up, a small introduction, starting with who am I? Well, I suppose you may know me better by my X logo profile picture or my Twitter or GitHub username, Zenova. But in reality, I'm a 24-year-old machine learning engineer from South Africa who's focused on bringing powerful AI models to the web. After completing my computer science degree at the University of Cape Town last year, I joined Hugging Face to continue developing a little side project I was working on at the time, Transformers.js. If I had to guess, I'd say I'd been working in open source for around nine years now, and I'm extremely grateful to the community for their support of the project. If you know about Hugging Face's Transformers library, you may already be able to guess what Transformers.js is. But for those unfamiliar, Transformers.js is a library that provides high-level abstractions for running state-of-the-art pre-trained models in JavaScript. It's designed to be functionally equivalent to the Python library, meaning you can run the same pre-trained model using a very similar API. As you'll soon see, it's unbelievable, unbelievable what our community, full of people who truly see the potential of machine learning on the web, have been able to build so far. In the last 18 months, we've already added support for 25 popular ML tasks, including text generation, object detection, speech recognition, just to name a few. In total, we support 120 different model architectures, covering a wide range of input modalities, as shown here. To make it really easy for users to get started, we converted over 1,200 models to be compatible with Transformers.js, and then uploaded the weights to the Hugging Face Hub. So how does it work? First, users convert their PyTorch, TensorFlow, or JAX models to Onyx using our Optimum library. Of course, if a user wants to use one of the already converted models, they can just skip the step and use the model ID from the Hugging Face Hub. Next, the user writes their JavaScript code. We recommend that new users utilize the pipeline function, which provides a high-level, easy-to-use API that encapsulates pre-processing, inference, and post-processing. For advanced users, we do expose the model tokenizer, processor classes, as well as other relevant functions. And finally, a user can open up their web browser and run their application. It's really that simple. It may also interest you to learn why I created the project in the first place. Well, like all good superheroes or supervillains, I also have a backstory. Two years ago, YouTube was dealing with a serious spam bot problem in the YouTube comments. To me, this sounded like a simple text classification problem. So I collected and labeled a few million comments, trained a small BERT model using the Transformers library. And since I didn't want to uh, pay for a server, I thought it would be a good idea to run this as a browser extension. Uh, but that's when I ran into an issue. There was no complete way to run a Hugging Face BERT model in the browser. So like Thanos at the end of Age of Ultron, I decided to take the fine, I'll do it myself approach and build a library to run BERT, GPT-2 and T5 models in the browser. After posting about the project to the Hugging Face Discord, there was a lot of interest from the community encouraging me to add more tasks and models. Two weeks later, the project blew up on Hacker News, rising to number one trending and in the process, helping us grow to over 2,000 stars on GitHub. Fast forward to today, and we're now working to achieve feature parity with the library uh, by continue to, continuing to add new models and tasks as they're released. And finally, the ultimate goal of Transformers.js is to help bridge the gap between web developers and machine learning by providing an easy way for people to add AI functionality to their web applications. So what's the purpose of Transformers.js, and why is Hugging Face exploring WebML technologies? Well, the answer to that can be found directly in our mission statement, to democratize good machine learning, democratize being the key word here. As you may know, we maintain a large collection of open source libraries, including transformers, diffusers, data sets, just to name a few. However, these are all implemented in Python, which means they aren't as easily accessible to, say, web developers, even though they make up a significant portion of engineers. Transformers.js aims to solve this problem. In addition to growing the community, we aim to help developers build never-before-seen web applications, whether it be real-time inference while a user draws something or processing, or processing of sensor data. Transformers.js serves as an easy way for developers to add AI to their applications. Whether it be distribution, when it comes to distribution, you simply cannot beat the web. Every time a new model comes out, 
these days, uh, the first thing people ask for is a web demo. The importance of a hassle-free, zero-install way for developers and users to get started cannot be overstated. Another benefit is that developers don't need to pay for a server to showcase their applications. Models are hosted for free on the Hugging Face Hub, and devs can deploy their applications using, let's say, GitHub Pages or Hugging Face Spaces. The last point I've noted here aims to highlight what this means for the end user. Combining on-device processing, processing uh, with the ability to access a plethora of browser APIs uh, empowers users to take control of their data, providing personalized experiences in a sandboxed and secure environment. We've been extremely lucky to have received so much support from the community. And now Transformers.js is one of the fastest growing JavaScript libraries out there on GitHub. Just recently, we were the number one trending repo on the site, uh, allowing us to grow by an additional 2,000 stars in the span of a month. To quote Atwood's, Atwood's infamous law, any application that can be written by, in JavaScript will eventually be written in JavaScript, and we're no exception. <laughs> We're also amazed to see the growth and adoption of the library by web developers. As of October this year, we're averaging around 750,000 unique monthly users. We host the uh, JS and WebAssembly files using JS Deliver, for which we have received around 40, 40 million uh, month, uh, requests in the past 12 months. And in total, we have over 2.4 million downloads on NPM, and currently we're averaging around 70,000 per week. For the eagle-eyed viewers out there, you may have noticed that the previous code snippets use imports from Hugging Face slash Transformers instead of Zenova slash Transformers. And that's because today, we finally released Transformers.js version 3, the main feature being WebGPU support. The projected speedups depend on the model and device you're using, of course, but for simple BERT-based models, we were, I was able to achieve a 64x speedup on a batch size of 32 on my Windows 10 PC. Some users have already posted uh, of achieving over 100x speedup on their devices. Next, let's take a look at what you can build with Transformers.js. To start, I just wanted to take a step back and talk about the development philosophy that, philosophy that we follow. First, uh, new model releases, for example, Llama 3.2. Next, we add support to the library. Typically, this involves converting the model to Onyx and updating the library with the correct configuration values. Um, but luckily, since the Llama 3.2 architecture was the same as previous generations, we could just reuse our conversion scripts. If it was a new architecture, the process would be a bit more complicated, first adding support to the Python Transformers library, then adding Onyx export support, and then finally integrating it into Transformers.js. Lastly, we create visual and interactive web demos and publish the source code to GitHub. Not only does this help us increase the visibility of the project when posting to social media, but also showcases, uh, develop, showcases what is possible with the library. By publishing the source code, we hope that developers can learn from it and adapt the ML components into their own projects. So now let's take a look at some applications that have been built with the library. Starting, of course, with privacy-focused chatbots that run 100% locally in your browser. The model shown here is Phi 3.5 Mini, a 4-bit quantized 3.8 billion parameter LLM from Microsoft uh, that is optimized for inference on the web. Thanks, thanks to a specialized multi-head attention WebGPU kernel, it can run up to 90 tokens a second on an RTX 4090. We also added support for multimodal chatbots, meaning the model can process and respond to image inputs too. The model shown here is Moondream 2, uh, a small vision language model designed to run efficiently on edge devices. We also add, when we added support for these models, we also added the ability to reuse past key values, uh, meaning we don't need to recompute image embeddings uh, for each follow-up message. Although the task of classification seems pretty simple, such models can be used to create really powerful applications. Take, for example, the video shown on the left, where we perform zero-shot classification to sort product reviews into classes defined at runtime. Similarly, we can uh, use a zero-shot image classification model like Clip uh, to do the same, but for images and videos. The video on the right shows a model running at 20 frames per second on an RTX 2080. Taking this idea further, you, may even, you are even able to build games using the simple image classification models. For example, Doodle Dash is a real-time ML-powered web game that we built that can run on both desktop and mobile. The game is inspired by Google's Quick Draw, uh, where you're given a word and you have, uh, and a neural network has to guess what you're drawing. In our version, you have one minute to draw as many items as you can, one prompt at a time. 
uh, if the model pr pr predicts your label correctly, the canvas is cleared and you get a new word. Uh, since the game runs locally, you don't have to worry about server latency at all. And the model is able to make real-time predictions to the tune of over 60, frames, 60 times a second. Uh, certainly, our most viral demos have been for speech recognition, like Whisper Web GPU, where, which enables multilingual transcription and translation across 100 different languages using OpenAI's set of Whisper models. On an M3 Max, you can achieve a 10x real-time factor, being able to process around 100, well, 120 seconds of audio in around 12 seconds. This also means that you can transcribe as you speak, uh, as shown in the video on the right. In-browser image editing software can also be enhanced using models like Segment Anything from Meta. For um, this model shown here is only around 20 megabytes in total and can decode mouse inputs in real time. In fact, community members have already turned this into a Figma plugin, simplifying the integration into existing design workflows. We also support image and video enhancement, giving rise to an interesting set of use cases around video streaming and compression. You can imagine how this can be used in browsers to lower bandwidth usage by streaming lower quality video and then enhancing it in real time on the client side. We've also experimented with similar models to enable real-time background removal or blurring, like those used for video conferencing, conferencing applications. Given a video of, say, an interview, we can combine a variety of models and tools in a pipeline to create a simple video editing website. First, we extract the transcript using Whisper, then we generate word level timestamps. Then we run a speaker diarization rization model. And finally, the last step, which is not included here, would involve FFFmpeg JS to add captions or to slice the video. As my university professor would say, the proof is left as an exercise for the reader. <laughs> uh, depth estimation models, like Depth Anything, can be used to create immersive 3D demos with libraries like 3JS. A community member even got it working with Apple Vision Pro by building an application that brings your photos to life. And then music generation. Uh, the audio clip shown here is a 10 second uh, audio generated by Music Gen from Meta. Uh, the model can generate up to 30, to 30 seconds of audio. Uh, we also In browser text to speech is now possible <laughs> thanks to Transformers JS just in case the default voices are a bit too robotic for your use case. And then we also support a multitude of vision and vision language tasks, thanks to Florence 2, a 230 million parameter vision foundation model that supports tasks like captioning, object detection, segmentation. Thanks to its small size, the model runs extremely well in the browser and can be used for things like alt text generation, a huge win for accessibility. Finally, and by, pop, by far our most popular multimodal use case, embeddings. The videos shown on here showcase demos that uh, we built that are able to search image and audio databases with natural language, returning the result in less than 50 milliseconds. Uh, let's hop into an editor to see how you can get started in just a few lines of code. For this example, we'll showcase how to run Whisper for automatic speech recognition. The first step is to import the pipeline function from the Transformers.js library, either from a CDN or from NPM. For simplicity, let's just stick to a CDN. Next, we'll create an automatic speech recognition pipeline by specifying the model ID uh, from the Hugging Face Hub as the second parameter. The last step is to pass the audio file to the pipeline. And that's it, just three lines of code to add state-of-the-art AI to your web applications. When running for the first time, the model, which in this case is around 40 megabytes, will be downloaded and cached in the user's browser. Subsequent runs will then reuse this cached model. You can also specify additional parameters, like return timestamps, which in this case, by setting it to Word, will generate Word-level timestamps for the transcript. To find models that are compatible with Transformers.js, you can navigate to hf.co forward slash models, select the Transformers.js library from the option on the left, and then filter by task to narrow down your search. Once you've found a suitable model, you can visit the model card, which will provide you with additional information on its usage. Another way to get started is using Visual Blocks, an amazing tool from our friends at Google that allow you to experiment with uh, ML pipelines with a visual interface. Stay tuned for the talk later that's gonna be giving you some more information. 
And for those interested, let's quickly pull the curtain back to talk about uh, what's going on behind the scenes. The first layer exists in Python world, where we convert the models to Onyx. Transformers.js lives in JavaScript land, and that's where we do things like model loading, caching, pre-processing, generation, and post-processing. Uh, finally, Onyx runtime is then used to execute the model's forward pass on the desired execution provider, for example, WebAssembly or WebGPU. In other words, Onyx runtime web is to Transformers.js as PyTorch is to the Python Transformers library. Another interesting aspect of the library is that we had to re-implement all the Python tokenizers in JavaScript so that they can run in the browser. As part of this effort, we also created a minimalistic JavaScript implementation of the Ginger processing engine, uh, a templating engine, which is designed to uh, generate a prompt for a given set of chat messages and templates. Finally, what's next for Transformers.js? Well, first of all, we'll continue adding new tasks and models, aiming to achieve feature parity with the Python Transformers library. Unfortunately, around 70% of web, web users have browsers without WebGPU support. Uh, uh, only 70% of users have access to browsers with WebGPU support. And for browsers like things like Firefox and Safari, WebGPU still remains behind a flag, meaning not all users can immediately uh, improve their web development uh, using WebGPU acceleration. That said, the standards and processes that browser implementers are currently implementing um, will become more stable, and as uh, during this process, uh, process Transformers.js will follow suit. Currently, due to protobuf and WebAssembly limitations, Transformers.js models are capped at four gigabytes in size, meaning we can't access some of the larger models. Um, but we're working towards fixing this, and soon you'll be able to run your 8Bs, Llama, 70Bs, all those things. <laughs> Um, we also aim to improve integration with and perhaps help guide standards for the next generation of web browsers, where scientific computing, uh, computing and AI applications take center stage. One can imagine a browser-based web store for models, similar to the Chrome, extension for, Chrome web store for extensions. From the user's perspective, they could search for web-compatible models on the Hugging Face Hub, uh, install it with a single click, and then access it across multiple domains. Currently, Transformers.js is limited in this regard since models are cached on a per site or per extension basis. Maybe there are some Chrome engineers in the audience who are interested in turning this into a reality. If so, let's connect. But anyway, that's all from me today. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions or ideas, and thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs>